Even before World War II began, as the Luftwaffe was gearing up, Germany's aviation ministry realized that while the Bf 109 was a very good fighter, there was a fear that it would become quickly outclassed once the war began in earnest. With concerns about maintaining an edge in the air as Germany subscribed to the quality over quantity philosophy of military procurement, the ministry tendered a request for another fighter to fight alongside the BF-109 in 1937, so that if it was outclassed, they had another option to back it up and hopefully maintain mastery of the air. Kurt Waldemar Tank, chief designer of Focke-Wulf Aircraft Group, proposed several concepts to the ministry for this new fighter but would be turned down as his designs relied upon the Daimler-Benz DB601, which was in short supply and being rationed for the BF109s. It wouldn't be until Kurt presented a concept using the BMW 139 radial engine that the Air Ministry became intrigued. This concept, using a radial engine for a fighter, was actually incredibly rare at the time for Europe in its transition to sleek monowing aircraft, as the common belief was such a choice would inevitably lead to high drag that would hamper the fighter. Kurt, however, did not believe this, and believed that if he could integrate the BMW 139 properly into the fighter, it would have produced the highly feared drag others said it would. After a somewhat lengthy design and production of a prototype, the first flight would occur in 1939 and lead to the Focke-Wulf's introduction two years afterwards as a mainline fighter. In comparison to the BF 109, the Focke Wolf 190 had a lot of creature comforts for a fighter plane that were missing or otherwise lacking in its brother. These included better canopy visibility, better ground handling, a large use of electronics for its mechanisms, and a surprisingly advanced engine management system that reduced pilot workload. Speaking of which, from the first prototype to the first production version, the engine would be swapped from a BMW 139 to a more powerful twin-row BMW 801, which would be used for the A, F, and G series of Focke-Wolves. Its first sorties would amount to sparse dogfighting over the channel, where it proved generally capable, only losing out to the new Spitfires and coming into RAF service, such as the Mark IX. However, it would not be the British that the Focke-Wulf became battle-hardened. In mid-1941, Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of Soviet Russia, would begin. Focke-Wulfs would be in the front line for the fight of air supremacy and would rule the skies alongside its Messerschmitt brother. While the VVS was struggling to modernize and maintain cohesion, suffering heavy losses and high attrition, Focke-Wolves would transition into a ground attack role as available Soviet planes to shoot down became scarce. Meanwhile, in North Africa, the focke flew in support of Erwin Rommel's Africa Corps, tangoing with Spitfires over the desert and doing fairly well right up until supplies and fuel ran out, a theme that would become very common for Germany as a whole. As Barbarossa stalled out due to the Russian winter and North Africa became abandoned after the Battle of Tunisia, the Focke Wolf 190 found a new foe on the horizon as the war turned against Germany, the 8th Air Force. With flying fortresses, liberators, Lancasters, and any other bomber with the range and payload beginning to heavily bombard German industry, the Luftwaffe became suddenly in need of a high-altitude interceptor with which to counteract the Allied strategic bombing campaign. While the BF-109 was suited for the task, the Luftwaffe wanted something more dedicated, which began the trend of every aviation firm in Germany building a night fighter or high-altitude interceptor, from the Heinkel 219 Uhu to the unconventional Dornier 335 Pfeffel. The Focke 190 would undergo a modification to fulfill the deed, replacing the radial BMW 801 with a supercharged Junkers Jumo 213 alongside other features such as a pressurized cockpit to make the new Model D Focke-Wulf, nicknamed Dora, more fit for high-altitude combat. But Germany, by now, was on the back foot, and the Dora, though capable, would be fighting late Model P-51s, Spitfires, and Yaks in both the East and West. After the D-Day landings and subsequent liberation of most of France, the Luftwaffe was strung tight on resources, most notably fuel. Doors would fly as often as they could to interdict the enemy bombers, but they were helpless against the might of the U.S. military-industrial complex. As factories were bombed time and time again, the Luftwaffe was soon in an unwinnable scenario. Then came January 1st, 1945, the day the Luftwaffe died. Operation Badenplatt was a Hail Mary effort to slow the Allies' advance into Germany, and while tactically successful, it completely drained Germany's strategic supplies. After Germany's defeat, the Focke 190 would find limited use post-war, before being quickly retired in favor of either Soviet or American equipment, which had existing supplies of spare parts that weren't a smoldering crater. Today, about 21 surviving original examples are still around from the 20,000 built over the course of the war. 
but in a rare case for a historical aircraft, Flugwerk Unlimited would produce 20 flying replicas from 1997 to 2012 for private hands and museums to purchase, ensuring that the Focke-Wulf did not become forgotten in the dustbins of history, and ensuring the plane's appearance alongside P-51s, Spitfires, and other warbirds in airshows for the foreseeable future.